Welcome back to Samsta Games, the place to find new strategy games. And today we're going to play the Rise of the White Sun demo. So this is a grand strategy game, forex strategy games. We try to take control of China. There in the demo, there are three scenarios we can pick. I think we're going to go with the with the fighting for Guangxi, which is kind of like the easy, the first scenario. It's a medium difficulty. And it's a short scenario. We're going to be playing, we can either play as the, uh, the old Gangxi clique led by Lu Rongying fights to restore its contested power over Guangxi. Uh, or this group, which is, uh, which who are fighting in the name of revolution and the Wu Paifu army. Uh, I think we'll play with just the first one, the Lu Rongting group. Luang Ting is governing the province in the name of the Beijing government, but his rule is no longer accepted. Local warlords and new Gangxi clique are rising to challenge his power. May 1924, Guangxi, although a very poor province, is coveted by its powerful neighbors to the north, west, and east. Lu Rong Ting, the current governor, has not been able to make sufficiently powerful allies, and his power is contested by a new clique from Guangxi, won over to the republican ideals of the Sun Yat Sen. Arriving from Hanun, General Shen Hongwing, supported by the powerful warlord Wu Pei Fu, also claimed the province. Which faction will rule Guangxi? Only the results of bloody fights and bold treasons will tell. You have 23 turns to take control of the whole province with your factions. This is a short scenario and the game will tell you that in a short scenario you don't necessarily want to focus on things like uh, increasing the prosperity of an area because you won't be playing long enough for that to matter. So the victory conditions is that we need to control different Guangxi districts. So we currently control seven out of 12 and we gain points for that. And if we control the whole province before September three, we gain additional um, points. This is Guangxi and we are the gray guys. So essentially this is, this is our look and we can click over here. We'll go over that in a moment, but first let me walk you through the different resources. So here we have key. This is essentially action points that you're going to be using to do actions every single turn. Uh, supporters. Supporters are willing pairs of arms. You need them for different kind of actions. And then we have money, self-explanatory, and then we have face. Face is a combination of prestige, reputation, and influence. And it's essentially, uh, you will, for example, gain face if, if you win combat. It's uh, either just, sometimes it's to do things, sometimes you have to have a certain amount of it to be able to do something. Here we can read about ourselves, about Lurong Thing, and we can see that we are a warlord. So we have access to a large array of political and military actions because of the fact that we are a warlord. For example, because we are a warlord, we might be able to do things like recruit bandits, which you might not be able to do if you are of a different type of role. Uh, we are an overlord, so we can interact with all troops from my faction. We are underworld master, so we can do illegal activities and business with secret societies. Oh, okay, so actually, so because of the fact that we are bandit, we can do the bandit next, but so not of because of the warlord, sorry. So this is these roles are quite important. Then we also have some different effects, like we are pragmatic, which gives us different bonuses. For example, this gives us bonus to actions relying on organizational skills. We are deceitful, so we're good with cunning. Uh, this is our native sp home, Guangxi, so we have bonus in relationship with the people, and we are southerner, so we have um, good stuff with dealing with people from the south, not so much with people from the front. Here we can see the size of my army, so I have 3k okay, people here, 7,000 here, and 3,000 here. And you can click on that with this inspect button to see information, so we can see your total morale. You can see the quality. So these guys are hardened. So they're like a medium quality level. And we can see the number of men, the number of rifles. So we're fully equipped. Artillery, machine guns, and coolies. Coolies are really important. Coolies help you keep your army supplied. So you need to have more coolies than you have men. And there are a couple of things we can do. So we could do quick orders. This is essentially a quick way to click something. Uh, the game will tell you not to do this unless you're experienced. So we're not going to do that. We can do to recruit, so we can recruit more soldiers. Uh, this will cost us two action points and money. We can gain more, we can train our troops so we can get them to higher quality. 
you can take the salute this will um increase the loyalty this is quite important because oftentimes in this game the units will not do what you tell them to do which can be quite problematic if it's the last action of your turn because you might uh, try to tell them to move to attack to help a neighboring army of yours but they just want to go so keeping your loyalty high is very important and you can gain supporters or handpick trusted men the more loyal the troop and the more care this is actually cool let's try to do a handpick trusted man cost us one action points and face we have a lot of face so i'm gonna try this Oh, so we took cut four supporters. Not sure if that was worth it. You took from a long time care of the most able men and officers of this troop. It's become a talent pool of trusted men. So we gain. So we actually. It, I think it's actually pretty good because it costs us five face to get four supporters, and clearly we have a lot more face than supporters. Uh, then you can see here information about my army. So they are in the Guangxi province, so they're at home. This helps with loyalty. They're supplied via railways, and they're opium addicts, which is not great because it affects their efficiency a uh, couple more things we can do we can do logistics so we can recruit coolies so this will uh help us with supply we could uh pay troops if we had enough money promote an officer this will help with loyalty we should have done this first we could uh spy on an army do counterintelligence but this is when we see you see enemy things uh did i do logistics yet yes and lastly, we could do order and so we could plunder where we are to gain some good resources. We don't want to do that because this is our home, but you could. It's important to look when you're looking at this. This is showing me where I can move. So I could move to Pinguino, to Liezhu, or here to Yulin. Uh, but for example, if I try to move down here, I would not have enough supplies to um, in that particular province. So a country can support 1,000 men strong army for each $5 agriculture revenue. And this area is too poor to sustain your troops to their full potential. So I would have to recruit more coolies so that they can essentially move stuff to my army to be able to handle this. I'm not entirely sure if you... Yeah, I, th I think you order the coolies with the army and not with the, with the province. So here, we're clicking on a specific province and we could do different things. For example, we could try to organize a peasant militia, which will give us some uh, militia that will help keep pirates and bandits at bay. We could try to mobilize the province. So we would gain a fun fighting unit here that we could then use move around. We could try to smuggle rifles. So this would allow us to buy some weapons. Uh, we could form a Zhuang self-government. So this will reduce our income from this particular uh, province, but it will increase my influence and we would gain a friendly self-defense army. So this is actually quite interesting. Might be relevant to look like how much you're making. So we're making uh, 15 from this revenue. So we would lose that, but we would gain an army. So that might be worth it. We could try to build a shop to make our own weapons or an anti-smuggling unit. This will lower the effect of influence on other merchants. So you can see that there are quite a lot of things you can do. It could also help with like education, which will, for example, decrease the different effects. For example, uh, we could increase, it will cost us some money now, but then we could do more like propaganda. Again, in this particular scenario, it's not the most beneficial because we are doing a short scenario. But for example, we could throw down Buddhist temples, which would give us money that will lower my influence in this particular area. So for example, if you know that you're going to be like plundering an area, you might want to also do things like that. Uh, another thing we can do, and this is actually quite important, you definitely want to check like the other army. So we know that this is one to a 5k size of an army. We could try to bribe them to lower their loyalty. Uh, we could, we, if we had a character of a spy type, we could spy on it, but I don't have it at the moment. I could click on, is he a spy? Could I click and send him here? No. Okay. 
So what I could do, for example, is I could grab this 7,000 army and move them over here. And they would probably be able to kill this army because they have more stuff. But we don't have enough coolies to actually supply this. Because we have 7,000, so we would need 35 of agriculture. And this place doesn't have, only has 32, so it's just not enough. So we would have to either try to increase the agriculture here. Oh, we actually can't even do that because we don't know control the district. So we couldn't build <laughs> anything there. I apologize, I will cut that out. So we could, um, we could simply, how, how is this place doing? So this is even worse. So we would actually lose less people if you went to attack here than move there. If I try to get more coolies. Let's maybe do that. Fearing to be enrolled by force, the peasants seem to magically disappear as soon as our troops are reported near their home. Thankfully, the local gentry proved to be very cooperative in helping our troops gather a fresh workforce. So we got three and a half thousand. We need, we can say we need more and pay extra money, say we have enough, or we need more and seize over the funds. So we'll say we have enough. So now I have 10,000, so now I should be able... Oh, it, it's interesting, it still says that it's not enough, even though I got the extra coolies. But I think I'll try it anyway, even if you lose a little bit due to the combat. Well, actually, if you lose people due to the combat, we'll probably have enough to support them, because uh, this has quite a bit. It's 32, so it's pretty close to what I need. So let's let's move. I want to show you combat. Oh, you need to either select the unit's commander or the gen overlord of a faction to give it orders. It has enough coolie. It has good more and has been paid. Strange that I can't. This unit commander is Luron Think. Okay, sorry, I have to click on this guy. Okay. So we're moving here, and we're going to attack these people over there. Ooh. None of the expected violent fighting occurred. Of course, some guns have been shot and some limited probing assaults were conducted, but most of the action consisted in sending emissaries, cordial discussions, and even on some occasions common banquets. After this careful examination of the defending troops, the attacking force commander decided he had no chances of winning and wisely withdrew to his previous positions. Seriously? Oh, come on. So we can see here that we lost 55 coolies and 2 men. Many of the men never went so far from their home village, but the call of adventure is not really appealing to these simple men, and as the troop progresses, many men just leave on the first occasion. So we lost some morale and we got a thousand deserters. And here we can see the battle report, uh, which we just read, and then... We lost some coolies and we got even more deserters. Okay. So this did not go well for us. We did not. I, and it's kind of interesting because it, it says like this army should be a lot smaller than ours. But it just wasn't enough. Oh, maybe the problem is that we are green. And they are not. So we would have to try with this army and I don't know if we have enough action points. But I, you know what, let's just try. No, 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 I clicked the same guys again. I didn't mean to do that. No, no, I clicked the right ones. Okay. Okay, fine. The real attack began after a long and deadly shelling that spread panic in the defender's rank. The attackers are crushed under a deluge of shells and the losses are appalling, surrounded on all sides by the enemy. The defenders could not find a way of retreat. The attackers remains master of the field while his enemy broken as a complete rout. For this victory, we gained 10 faith. So as you can see, it matters a lot. Uh, whether you are a green unit or not, because you can see that the difference here is huge. But we lost quite a bit of our army here. So we're definitely going to need to recruit some more soon. Uh, we can re recruit soldiers now. We could gain supporters, but I don't know if that's worth it. We have enough coolies to support our people, so I think we're fine for now. But we could now do stuff at the... If I had enough action points, how come I still don't control the district? I already have my people there. Interesting. Okay, so I could plunder it or try to reclaim the district. So we would have to wait for next term and then I could reclaim it or I can simply plunder it. 
I think I might want to reclaim it, even though like this scenario is telling you that you don't need to worry about that. I think it would be pretty cool. Let me move this army upwards towards these guys. Apparently they have enough to support us. And it could it could help us sort of be able to attack some other people. Self-government army moved to Liezhu. We lost some coolies, but that's fine. Okay. So we're going to end our turn here. Wait for next week. So they, they, there has been some combat up here. We don't have to worry about that. Okay, what, what, what is happening here? The desertion rate in this tube is alarming. Most of these men turn to banditry. Oh, that's not good. Interesting. So we might need to do something to increase our loyalty. What if I... Well, I don't have enough money to pay the troops. But I could promote an officer. The loyalty of the unit will increase with the rank, but he will reclaim a higher pay and other units' loyalty may decrease. Let's do that. Because you can see that the morale is very low. That's actually still quite low, but I guess it helped a little bit. Okay. And we got a lot of money, so I guess we can afford to pay a bit. We could potentially... Hmm... What else could we do? Could collect it, we could build a road. No, you know what, let's, let's first focus on the things we want to do here. So we want to reclaim this, um, this province. Get a community and local civil servants and tell them that your new boss in town, the area will be under your control. Community leaders and local civil servants have been gathered and put back to work under your supervision. Your men start to immediately escort the tax collectors. Your protection has a cost. The area is now under my control. Your strong local ties help you put the administration back on its feet in no time. So we increase the influence. And this is great. So we don't have any more action points, but if we did, what we could do is we could... Um, let me actually get the info about this province. Um, that's not what I want. Yeah, so we're going to be making quite a bit of money from this one. I think this was a good move. Because, yeah, 36 revenue. Mostly from ugly shelter and taxes. This is actually quite good. And we could do more stuff. Again, you can always plunder if you want to. But I don't think we want to, necessarily. So these guys are of high quality. So these are bandits. What you can do is you can actually recruit bandits. So that might be something we want to be looking at. And then try to move them here. Because this army... This army is pretty strong. One to hand 5k is quite a bit. Could we spy on them? I could only bribe them. But I do have uh, four more action points with this guy, so I might want to be doing some things in the economy. I like doing the economy, even though it's not what you need for this scenario. For example, if we taught them modern agriculture, it will reduce tradition and unlock new agriculture policies. So this so province only has agriculture of 16, but we have a, another one like here. Oh no, this one only has 10. Oh, but we could do a phone here. We'll slightly increase your influence over all classes. We'll slightly lower the risk of results in bandits' influence. We'll slightly increase the trade income. So trade is 30, so this could be useful. So let's try that. The phone and the telegraph in, will enable us to communicate easily with logical magistrate and officials for better control of the province. Of course, wiretapping is still an option. Fast communication will also help prevent revolts and respond quickly to bandit threats by sending troops to the right location in time. Well, at least if the officials are not deterred by the cost of a call. When 100% when complete police and militias will be more efficient lowering the bandit threat, lowering the risk of a revolt and increasing the trade income. So it didn't increase the trade income yet. Presumably we need to... But it did say it's only in 10%. So I'm guessing that it takes 10 turns to possibly finish. Which is quite interesting. We could also build a road, but it's probably going to take a while. Hmm. We don't have many supporters left, so we might need to get things that will give us supporters. Ooh. If we expand, let's let's actually try to do the peasant militia just so we can see like how much is that gonna give us of things. 
What you ask us is a real burden. The peasants are absorbed by their agricultural duties. They not only need to feed the city, but their families too. You want us to help fight the ferocious bands that are sacking our hamlets and villages? We will need more than words. What will the government do for us? I just build you phones. Give you weapons, so hundred dollars and hundred rifles. It could give them pay, or um, I'll give them ten dollars. After long discussions, the details concerning the organization of the militia are said as follows: When the peasants are not busy with the fields, the paid militia will be placed under the command of respected public figures who have served at at least three months in the army. Men will then train for the equivalent of a month each year with an annual assessment of their performances at the nearest military camp. The finest elements can be awarded with medals and silver in addition to the bounties for the capture of neutralization of bandits. As these militiamen would receive only nominal pay and would be mostly self-sufficient, they would cost you next to nothing. So we get plus 15 to progress of militia formation. The government is encouraging the creation of peasant self-defense militias. Yeah, so we can see that we're slowly moving here. It's apparently going to take a long time to get this thing going. But at least we started moving in the area. So this is why the game tells you that you shouldn't like focus on that too much in the short scenario because it's going to take forever. But Ooh, we don't have enough coolies here. That's a problem. And I don't have enough points to get more coolies now. So we're going to lose some people here. That's super sad. But it is what it is. Yeah, so see, this is telling us to behave like a warlord, even though I'm not. So you can see here, we actually haven't lost any men yet, but we might lose them soon. So we definitely need to recruit coolies like ASAP. Ooh. Fearing to be enrolled by the force, the peasants seem to magically disappear as soon as our troops are reported near their homes. So we got them 4,000 extra soldiers, but I wanted coolies, not soldiers. Just kind of interesting. And we lost some unit quality and loyalty. Uh, so let's just say we're ready to fight. Oh, oh, I clicked on recruit soldiers. I wanted to click on recruit coolies. Okay, well, we need coolies now, like ASAP. 4,000 isn't enough. So I actually kind of need more. So I'm going to pay a bit more money. So now we've got 6,000. So now we're almost equal. Land too poor to sustain the troops. So we're going to need to move the hell out of the way. Oh, unfortunately, everybody is too poor. But we could try... Oh, this is a large army, so they would kill us immediately. But I could try to move at the bandits. I don't know if I'll be able to win, because they are of a higher quality. If I use my other guys, can I use them to train these people? But it's going to take time, and I don't know if that's going to be... Okay, actually, give me plus one training immediately. But I need four stars. So I could do this again, give them two stars. Which is still not going to be enough. And then go and attack. They will die, but we'll do it anyway just to show you uh, the attack. No, I clicked on the wrong people. Right? I click on the wrong people. Oh! But the bandit leader ran away. No, no, no. I clicked on the right ones. Okay. So we won here. We still don't have enough coolies, so we're slightly in trouble, and the agriculture thing cannot support us. But we managed to get over here, so this would be a good time if we had action points to probably plunder this province. Because it would give us uh, money, and we don't actually care about this particular province. But I think this is a good time to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, find out in the comments, and you can click on the right to watch some other games. That I play on this channel. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.